Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another sequence video. So this one is, uh, it's encoded, but it's amazing. And it's in Mark 10, uh, 34 to 52. And so for people to understand the sequence that I, that I teach that I believe I received on the 1st of January, 2020, is that Christ will return and then he will bring two witnesses to America and then he'll take away his elect. And then there'll be a 1260 day period of great tribulation of plagues described in Revelation 16 then a 30-day period of God's wrath with his elect, and then a 45-day period of miracles for the remnant and then the kingdom of heaven. And so I find that pattern, that sequence everywhere. And it's also here in Mark 34 to 52. And they shall mock him and scourge him. And again, this is in 34, 444, FFF, 666, which oftentimes references Christ's return. And they shall mock him and shall scourge him and, and shall spit upon him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. So he'll be appearing again in the sky in the last days. Again, this is foreshadowing what's going to happen in the end. Verse 35, And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that, sh that thou shouldest do for us whatever we shall desire. So James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who are the part of the elect, come unto him. So when he appears, shall rise again, the elect will come unto him. So this is the symbolic language. And so uh, just know that. Verse 36, And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? So they're being kind of like uh, sneaky here. You know, they're like, before I even tell you, do this kind of thing. And so, you know, Christ obviously is not going to fall for that. Verse 37, they said unto him, grant us that we may sit on thy right hand and on thy left hand in thy glory. So this is also foreshadowing Christ's return, that when he returns in this glorified state, he's going to have two men with him on his left and his right hand side. And the lesson that I was preparing um, is we know that that's Moses and Elijah. Okay, so it's nobody that's there in, in front of them at that time. And so John the Baptist is Elijah. And so they're, they're asking, and they know that they're aware that there are two exalted seats even above them. And so that's why uh, he doesn't say, what are, you, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Those two seats, they, they're, they exist. Okay, and then they will be, there will be two men on his left and right hand side, like it says here, when he returns in the, in the glory, in his glory. And they're asking to be th those two. And Jesus says, and so just know again, this is foreshadowing exactly, you know, what I teach where um, Christ will return and then two witnesses will be brought here. And that's according to Acts 1, 10 to 11. And then we see that again here. Verse 38, but Jesus said unto them, ye know, ye know not what you ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I am, that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am to be baptized with? And they said unto him, we can. And Jesus said unto them, ye shall indeed drink of that cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized with, shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right and on my left hand is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And so this also reaffirms that Christ is not in charge of everything. The Most High is the one who decides every single thing and who sits where and all that kind of stuff. And so he's saying those two seats exist and there will be two men with him when he returns in his glory. But it's not for him to decide. And verse 41, and when the 10 heard, they began to be much displeased with James and John. So the other 10 heard and they're like, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get above us kind of thing. Verse 42, and then Jesus called him, them to him and saith unto them, you know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority upon them. And we see that in the world right now. This beast system, okay, just, uh, you know, running amok, you know, with the world. And so Christ is trying to contrast the way the Israelites, the, the elect will be relative to them, okay? But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. Verse 44, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. That's in verse 44, God's elect will understand. And so all these people on YouTube and in real life who are not actually serving anybody, it's, oh, it's just, it's about me. Send, send your money all, you know, I'm doing all this and all that kind of stuff. That's not what the, the Bible teaches, okay? That's not who's going to be the greatest, Verse 45, now it's amazing. And so now, so we have that language, which for most people, and I'm not trying to be rude, but most people will read this and just be like, okay, he's giving them a lesson. But now we understand because God has opened our eyes to the fact that this is Bible prophecy as well. Listen to this, verse 45, for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life for, uh, for a ransom for many and to give his life a ransom for many. And so talks about Christ appearing at the beginning goes through some time where the, the um, Gentiles exercise lordship over others. 
And then it talks about the Son of Man coming again. And so I want people to understand that this is encoded, but this is what the Bible is teaching us. Christ is teaching us. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto. So now is another reference to the Son of Man coming. Okay. Verse 46, and they came to Jericho. And so now it's a reference to the Middle East. Okay. And as he went out to Jericho with his disciples, and listen to this, and a great number of people. And so this is when Christ returns with his elect, you know, and his angels. And it's for this battle in Armageddon in the Middle East. And so in this language here, it's talking about Jericho, but in the last days, it's going to be um, in the Middle East, you know, for this final battle where Christ is destroying everybody with the mark of the beast. Okay. I'll read that again. And they came to Jericho as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And so now we're going to get a reference to the kingdom. Verse 48, and many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried, the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise. He called thee, he calleth thee. Verse 50, and he, and he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. So he's, he's like, he spoke loud enough, okay? He got his attention. That's, a, that's an element of faith for him to do that. Verse 51, and Jesus answered and said unto him, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man saith unto him, Lord, that I re might receive my sight. Verse 52, and Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. And so this is now a reference to the kingdom where there's healing, you know, people's sight is being restored and then the person was made whole. Okay. And so again, in Mark 10, 34 to 52, we have a reference to Christ shall rise again, you know, in the sky, bringing the elect unto him. Then we have a time of the, the Gentiles exercising lordship and uh, all that kind of stuff. And then we have a reference to Christ returning again, you know, with his elect and his great number of people, a great company shall return thither. You know, Jeremiah 31, 8. Um, we know we know what uh, return thither means now. God's elect, I suspect, have been sealed. You know, so just take that for what it's worth. Jeremiah 31, 8. Behold, I'll bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. And so God's elector in all nations and with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travails with child together. Listen to this, a great company shall return thither. What does that word mean? What does that phrase mean? A great company shall return thither. We understand that here. Now we understand that in all my sequence videos that Christ is going to return. <clears throat> like it says here with his disciples and a great number of people. And this is amazing language here. I just noticed this now, even in 46, it said blind Bartimaeus. Okay the son of Timaeus. And so what does Jeremiah 31, eight say? And with the blind and the lame. Okay. So the Bible links up perfectly. Okay. There's no contradictions here. The only people that should be teaching the Bible are the 144,000. I make a bold claim on my channel that I'm one of them. And so I want people to understand that uh, the elect have been sealed. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.